somebody has a dirtier mouth than me that I'm going to call up. Because she's my bestest sister. Pam Africa. Pam Africa. Stand up for Pam Africa. She's a survivor. She's a leader of those who another government in another city thought it was fine to bomb a whole damn block to get us some people that they didn't like their politics and their lifestyle. Mamiya is behind bars and has been behind bars. Pan Africa and the committees that she's formed, both here in this country and throughout the world, are the reasons why our brother Mamiya is not dead. But we still have unfinished business because he needs to be out. Sister Pam Africa. Bring it down, bring it down. On the move, family. It is more than an honor to be here today. Um, no other place would I gave up going to Mississippi, goddamn. And uh, um, I was supposed to have been here for Brother Chakwe Lumumba today in Mississippi. But I'm here in New York, standing with the sisters and, uh, and those brothers who had the strength and the backbone to stand alongside of us revolutionary don't back down, don't bend up, don't suck up sisters. So we want to give it to the brothers. Um, I'm always at war. And um, that dirty mop I think is very clean. I just be talking about dirty rotten motherfuckers. <laughs> but how clean can that be? <laughs> As y'all know, Mumi has taken uh, the headlines. And um, we got to be very careful about, it was Gil Scott Hand who said the revolution will not be televised, and that's just it. A lot of people were told the other day that the NAACP legal defense lawyer that this government is going after, and uh, uh, so-called going after, and uh, was responsible for Mamiya being out of jail. They repeated that over and over and over again. That's a goddamn lie. Right. Who's responsible for Mumia being out of jail is the people. The people that was united and never backed the fuck down off these people. I'm sick and tired of these weak, spineless, disjointed motherfuckers coming up and trying to take the right front row in a revolution. These people did not even defend Mumia. Look at this. The President of the United States, him, the FOP, the government terrorist organized crime members who rape, uh, rape, rob, bomb, throw people in jail. They're no different than the motherfuckers that's going overseas raping, robbing, bombing, throwing people in jail. That's what they did here in our gentrification, taking over all the land, messing up with medical care, and uh, destroying the food. It's the same enemy. But when they want to try to look like they're us, They'll find some weak ass motherfucker so that people can clap and say that they did our work. <laughs> Mumia is off a death row because of the power of this movement. And we must never allow them to rewrite our history. This war isn't over. I want y'all to know that situation with Abdelbelli, I think that's his name, and the uh, President of the United States, I believe it was a front to get rid of the whole civil rights section and all of the uh, Justice Department. Because look, when the FOP came after um, Obama, who wanted this guy, he knew what his credentials was. His whole organization knew what this man's credentials was. Why didn't he defend this man from day one? Why didn't he defend his own position? We, a few of us, went after this government exposing what was going on. How come the government is not speaking out? Who, who, told, who told Obama to shut up? Who told the NAACP to shut up? Who told the Legal Defense Fund, which is Mumia's attorneys? How many people heard them demonize Mumia? 
saying that Mumia was a cold-blooded cop killer. Mumia confessed to killing um, Faulkner. Everybody in this room, if you don't know, go back into the history of IAC because it's there to tell you that that was a lie. Why didn't they defend Mumia? Why didn't they defend Abadeli or Abadeli, whatever his name is, from the very <laughs> beginning? And uh, there was a vote last month that went 10 to 8, our favor. The FOP looked at that and he was like, whoa. What we got to do, we got to go back and reorganize. They said they had the people, the senators, calling their constituents and letting them know that this cop killed this black man who killed this white police officer and left his wife and uh, without children and are uh, still grieving for her husband. And uh, they said that this black man is a cold-blooded murderer and we must stop it. And uh, they went on the TV, they was on the news, they were everywhere. But where was our side? There was no Sharpton speaking about it then. There was no Al Jazeera, just like they didn't speak about Chakwe Lumumba and on his death, they did not speak about what was happening with Mumia until after the fact. That's why I call these motherfuckers the after the fact motherfuckers. <laughs> All of a sudden, Every last one of them got microphonic seizures. Even that knucklehead president got something to say. And it was right that little bit that he said because it was a travesty of justice. Sharpton on the air, microphonic seizures every goddamn where. Now he want to talk about Mumia. MSNBC want to talk about it, but they never defended what they knew was right. Mumia's an innocent black man on death row. What they all said, that this lawyer had the right to defend whatever kind of criminal that there is. Then they compared this case to a, I don't know, it was a black man who raped white women and killed some children, or a black man who did it. I don't give a fuck which one it was. It was wrong, and they had the right to speak out it, but the LDF who had microphonic seizures never defended Mumia and didn't do a proper defense of Abadeli. And uh, what was actually happening here too, and uh, Ben Jealous came out, head of the NAAC, former head, he says that, um, oh, this has nothing to do with Mumia. It has everything to do with voting rights. And all uh, you know, and I'm saying that too, as if it means something, but that too. And all uh, you know, so they're going and giving all these reasons of why uh, uh, Abadelli should be there. And I'm saying none of them motherfuckers belong there. I wouldn't want them in defense of me because at the point you got microphones around the world on you and you don't defend the person that we are paying them to defend, I'm saying them motherfuckers got to be removed. <laughs> Lynn Stewart went to jail because she was in defense of her attorney. What people here do not know, because they talking about somebody who defended Mumia 2001, did y'all know that the LDF is Mumia's attorneys right now? So how do you go there and don't go after the rest of them? And how can the rest of them sit there and see them going after them unless they felt very secure in what the hell they was doing? And all you know, because if they go after his job, him climbing up the ladder, and that's all they do. A lawyer is nothing but a man who wants to be a judge. A judge who is nothing but somebody, all right, all woman, that's right. And all uh, you know, um, that's climbing, that's climbing. So when they cut you off at the knee joints, they trying to make these people shut up, keep quiet. And see, it ain't about Mumia. It's about each and every last one of us who seek a lawyer to be up there for us instead of us doing the right thing and learning how to defend our motherfucking selves because these motherfuckers won't. And you gotta understand that. And uh, we're the only form of life that goes outside of ourselves to have someone else defend us. You know, lions don't do it, bears don't do it, snakes don't do it, rats don't do it, but here we are. Even when we have our children, we go look for some damn body else to do what God gave us the right to do. Or whatever you want to call that source of life. With that, I'm going to say, before I say on the move, 
On April the 26th, we're bringing a massive movement into Philadelphia. We're talking about gentrification because in our black neighborhood, where there once were black people, now Temple's there and it's lily white and uh, and these students have no idea and no respect for what what went down here from Cecil B. Oil, uh, Cecil B. Moore Avenue where Reggie Shell office once was, they done tore all that down. We're coming from there all the way up because the Panther move in the beginning had to do with housing, gentrification, had to do with police brutality, had to deal with all our issues. So I want to say here now, and uh, let's do for Mumia what Mumia has done for us. Let's march on that motherfucking show them something on the move along the revolution. United we stand, divided the motherfuckers are for all.